important to get your message out there, whether it be social media or traditional media. And so today I'm getting on a phone call with a reporter who's interested in speaking about um, healthcare and intimate partner violence. And so I jump at the opportunity to speak with any reporter uh, to be able to discuss the work I do in the hopes that I can get some messages out there that educate the public on the issues I care about. And so while I don't know where the conversation will go and what questions will be asked, I know what key messages I want to get across about the topic um, I'm speaking about. Hello, this is Jillian. Hi, uh, Jillian. This is. How are you? Good. How are you? Sure. My role is to go out and train as many health professionals uh, across the state of Connecticut on the importance of screening for intimate partner violence, and primarily it's. Um, getting healthcare providers comfortable to do the screening um, and to ensure that they are screening everyone. And then um, to ensure that once they do the screen, they make a referral to one of the domestic violence providers in the state. So I go out and inform the healthcare providers about the best practices, um, which come from uh, national experts. Um, and the hope is that uniformly, um, all healthcare providers will start to screen um, and ask the question, um, is anyone in your life hurting or threatening you in any way? Um, what we know is that physical violence is one method of control that's used by an abuser, but it often comes after other types of control. So emotional, psychological, technological, and so it's important that healthcare providers ask all of their patients because you really can't tell who might be a victim of domestic violence. A big part of my work is coalition building. So in order to get a policy off the ground and to move it forward, you need various partners at the table. And so again, working on comprehensive sexual health, trying to get that K through 12 uh, for all of our students, I'm engaging various partners to see if they want to take part in what we call Healthy Youth, which is our coalition to try and get this policy statewide. Uh, so right now, just had a meeting with one of my long-term uh, partners, an organization uh, that works on women's social justice issues with the hopes that they will be able to take the angle of Title IX. Um, so we know that sexual harassment and assault is not permitted um, within high schools, within any school um, that receives federal funding. And so our hope is that they will come to the table and be able to shed light on the importance of comprehensive sexual health K through 12 as it impacts Title IX. Another day, another interview. This time I am being interviewed for television, a local news program. A group of us have been invited to speak about human trafficking. My goals for today are to get across the point that there are many forms of human trafficking and to also bring up the need to focus on the demand side, so going after the buyers. As chair of the state's Trafficking and Persons Council, I just had the opportunity to be on a conference call with 21 other states from across the country to learn about what they're doing to combat human trafficking. Uh, today's call was actually about what's happening in rural communities and how we can learn from one another. Um, in addition to making um, coalitions here at the state level, it's important to work with partners across the country to learn from their experiences. Um, it just makes for better policy and um, better partnerships.